Hello everybody and welcome to this week's Easy 11 Plus live lesson. I'm back from my holidays, Grigri is back from his holidays, and I hope you've had a lovely summer as well um, and you've got the chance to do some nice things and enjoy the hot weather rather than just cooking as I am doing right now. If there's strange background noise it's because the fan's going, I'm almost suddenly going to have to turn that up because it's absolutely boiling it's here, here it's over 30 degrees outside um, and I've got it on the lowest setting, that's not going to last. Anyway let's see how we do. Uh, this is Grigri today, someone's saying Dimitri, Dimitri's in the other room. Uh, we've got Grigri because he was the nearest to hand, weren't you? Um, and yeah, today we're going to be looking at simultaneous equations. Before we do, I want to give my usual reminder of my special offer uh, for, that you can send me work for free feedback. Loads of people have used it already, but loads of people haven't. There are thousands and thousands of people who watch this channel who have not sent me a piece of writing for free feedback. It's really simple, I'll post a link in the comments after this lesson, but what you need to know is that if you Google 11 plus lifeline, and that's 11 number plus lifeline, uh, and you look at the link at the top of the page, you can send me a work complete piece of work completely free to try out my marking service, and then I send you comments and little voice voice clips and even some videos alongside your work in which I explain exactly what's already great, what you can do to improve, and some steps to becoming a great writer. So give that a try. The reason I do it is so that people can see my marking service and find out whether it might be useful to pay for more, but there's no charge at all for sending me a simple piece of work uh, for feedback up front. Right, okay, uh, I'm just going to let Grigri out of the door because he's uh, asking and there's another room in this house which is uh, which has got an air conditioner in it and that's where he wants to go, so just give me a moment. Hi Grigri, there you go. Come on, don't leave your tail in the door. Oh, he always does this, he always leaves his tail. That's it. He always leaves his tail sticking through the door so I can't shut it and I have to bend down and bat the tail through before I can close it. Absolutely typical cat behaviour. Uh, right, today we're going to be looking at simultaneous equations and the cover image of this video has me looking like a devil um, as a kind of little joke about how this is a notoriously horrible topic and it's something that some schools expect you to know for the 11 plus exam and yet it's something that isn't consistently taught, um, particularly in primary schools, um, more prep schools may cover it. Um, and so you end up with one of these questions and you go, whoa, what can I do? So today I am going to be showing you how to solve simult simultaneous equations, but I'm also going to be something that doing something that I think is actually more important, which is I'm going to be showing you how you can almost always solve these problems without having all the algebra knowledge needed to deal with, simultane with simultaneous equations. So I'm going to be showing you both approaches um, when it's relevant, and I hope that will show you that these are not questions that you need to be afraid of. There are loads of comments. I'm not going to get too stuck in answering them today, um, at least that's my intention. Uh, simply because I am so hot that I want to power through and get to the end of this and um, be able to just cool down uh, outside this stuffy room. So I I'm, I'm hope you'll be able to understand my motivations there. Right, okay, let's have a look at the questions. This was very stressful uh, in the last hour getting ready for this lesson because I turned my uh, little tablet laptop on, which is what you can see, which is what you can see me working on here and I discovered it locked out with a Microsoft security lock for some reason. Um, and then I spent ages scouring the internet for a code I could use to unlock it. It was very stressful, but we're here now and it works, at least for now. Let's see. Right, okay. This is a really typical question that you might see. A farmer decides to buy some cats and some dogs, okay? Um, calm, farmers that I know tend to hate cats, but there we are. Uh, it depends on the farmer. Two cats and three dogs would cost £180. One cat and four dogs would cost £190. Work out the total cost of three cats and seven dogs. Now, I reckon that most of you are in one of two categories. One of, well, I'll say there are three categories out there. There's a category of people, amazing, who have looked at this and have already worked out how to do it. Great, well done you. But I reckon that a good 90% of you are in one of two camps. Either you are looking at this in a panic and going, I have no idea, no idea how to do this, or you're looking at this and going, aha, I, I know how to do simultaneous equations, and you start doing this sort of thing, and you start writing something that looks a bit like this. You write 2c plus 3d equals 180. C plus 4d equals 190. It might need to subtract, so I'm gonna double that, 2c, okay. 
and you're going to do an awful lot of calculating. You will get there in the end if you do that without making mistakes, but you will spend a lot of time and a lot of mental effort that you do not need to expend. Take some time and look at the question. Work out the total cost of three cats and seven dogs. Now, take your time with that bit. Don't just plunge in and assume that you need to solve two equations. What's going on here? Total cost of three cats and seven dogs. And what have we got up here? We've got three cats and seven dogs. So if two cats and three dogs would cost 180, and one cat and four dogs would cost 190, add it all together, and we have three cats and seven dogs costing 180 plus 190 equals naught, 17, carry the one, three. 370. Don't forget to write the pound sign. We have 370 pounds. And because there's an answer space, I'm going to double underline it to make clear that that is my answer. I'm not even going to show you the other method because it's completely unnecessary. If you're solving this with rows and rows of algebra, you're not doing it right, or at least you're not. You're doing it in a way that's so inefficient that it would be a real stretch to call it right, even though if you do it right, you'll get to the correct answer in the end. Now, how can you spot a question like this that requires this method? Very often, it's because rather than asking what's the cost of a cat and what's the cost of a dog, it asks for the two together. And that's often a sign that you just have to combine the whole thing in some way. It might not be quite as simple as just adding it together. You might have to double one and add, or it might be about subtracting. But very often, a question like this, where they're asking for a combined cost or value of whatever sort, it's a question where you can actually shortcut the fiddly algebra. I hope that makes sense. Um, Supreme Trivedi rather cryptically says, I have no internet, so sorry, I'll watch this tomorrow. But Supreme Trivedi is writing a live comment, so they must have internet. Okay, a case for Watson and Holmes. Okay, so that's that. So that's already a question that looks terrifying, but in fact is not. Um, for Lake Omalaja, please do not spam the comments with massive screeds of nonsense. Um, because it just takes up space that people can use for saying constructive things. And a big shout out. Okay, this is for you, even though you just spam the comments. So that is, that is how nice I am. A big shout out for your cat, Daisy. Hello, Daisy. I hope you're managing okay in the summer's heat. Right, on to the next question. Johnny and Jennifer with one N. Interesting, unusual the spelling. Does anyone here know someone called Jennifer with one N? Um, went to the school canteen at break time. Johnny bought two pairs and three oranges. He paid 90p for them. Jennifer brought two pairs and one orange. She paid 50 pence for her fruit. Work out in pence how much pears and oranges cost at their school canteen. And you can see this is not one of those questions we just looked at because it wants one pear and one orange. So we do have to find out the cost of each. Now with this one, I'm going to start off by doing it uh, using the standard algebraic approach for solving simultaneous equations like this. And then I'm going to talk about how you might solve it if you aren't comfortable with algebra. And you'll see that it's quite similar, but it involves a lot of the awkward working, okay? Um, now, I'm not going to be teaching algebra from the bottom up here because there's no time to do that and show you simultaneous equations. So I'm assuming that you have some understanding of algebra. If you don't, still follow it, see what you can get from my explanation, and then maybe go back, watch my more basic algebra videos, and then come back and see whether you understand it a little bit better. But also, hang on anyway, because after I've done the algebra, I'm going to show you how you can do this a little bit more simply. So. Um, we could call, when, we do, when we're solving these, we need to replace the things, pears and oranges, with letters, so we don't keep writing pear and orange. The obvious thing would be P and O, but um, O looks like a zero, especially in my writing. So we're not going to do that, we're going to call them P 
and what should we say? Should we say G for orange? How about that? Okay. And we're going to turn each of these rows into an equation, starting with this. John, you bought two pairs and three oranges. He paid 93 for them, 90p for them. So in other words, in total, their cost equals 90p. So we got equals, and we're going to do everything in pence, and we're going to leave out the pence value because that's going to otherwise going to look like pairs. Okay. So we got 2p plus three oranges. We're calling that g equals 90. Now what about Jennifer with one N, okay? She bought two pairs and, so and is plus, yes, that makes sense. Two pairs and one G, so you can write one G, but when you're doing algebra, you don't need to write one. If there's only one G, just write G, okay? Two pairs plus G equals 50P. So equals here is saying is the total amount. Now, why have we written these equations like this? Well, there are two things going on at the same time. We've got Johnny making a purchase, a mixture of pears and oranges, and we've got Jennifer making a purchase of pears and oranges. The reason that these equations are simultaneous, meaning at the same time, is because they're buying the same pears and the same oranges. Not literally the same ones, but pairs which are, for our, for our purposes, the same. They have an identical price. Each pair costs the same, each orange costs the same. So these equations are, if you like, happening in the same universe, where pairs and oranges have the same value. So we put them together and we look at them at the same time, simultaneously, simultaneous equations, okay? Now, this step coming up is where I'm going to really cut a corner for you later and I hopefully make this make a lot more sense. But for the moment what I'm going to do is I'm going to label these equations as A and B and I'm going to put those in circles just so they don't look like they're part of the equation. Now what can we see here? We can see that we've got two pairs, 2P in both equations, and we've got different numbers of G. We can't solve a single equation if it's got more than one letter in it because we're just going to keep jiggling them around and we're going to go a bit crazy. We want to have just one letter. We want to know how many P's are a certain amount of money or how many G's are a certain amount of money. Now here in these two equations we've got the same number of P's and that means that we can get rid of those P's. How can we do it? We can do it by subtracting the equations. Now I'm going to come back and explain why I've done it in this order later. I'm just going to do it for now. So equation A minus equation B gives us what's 2P minus 2B. So we're doing a column subtraction here. 2P minus 2P is no P's, so we skip that. 3G's minus 1G is 2G's equals is equals. And 90 minus 50 is 40. So 2G, two oranges, is 40P. What does that mean? It means that one orange is half of 40, which is 20p. So the cost of one orange is 20p. That was nice and easy. How can we find the cost of one pair? So this now is actually really simple. We know that the cost of, we can pick either of these two, equa two equations. Which one are you going to pick? I'm going to pick the simpler one, which is the second one, but it doesn't matter which one you pick. If we go back to B, Okay, I'm just going to put lines in to break up the stages of my reasoning because it makes it easier to follow. B, I'm going to write that out again, 2P plus G equals 50. But you see, we know what G is now. We know that it's 20. So you can write that again, 2P plus, 2P plus 20 is 50. So 2P not plus 20 is 30. Does that make sense? If 2Ps and 20 added on is 50, then 2p's without 20 added on is 20 less, 30. Another way of thinking about that, we've subtracted 20 from both sides of the equal sign, okay? These are the kinds of things I'm not gonna explain from the ground up. They're covered thoroughly in other algebra videos that I've done, okay? 2p is 30, so if two pairs are 30 pence, then one pair, of course, is 15 pence. If you want to do it more fully, you can say 30 divided by two equals 15. So we've got g is 20 and p equals 15. And the last stage that you should follow here is quickly to check it with the other equation, even mentally. So we've, we've worked it out using this second one. Now we put them into the first one. This is just to check that we're right. If it now works, we're okay. So p is 15, two p's, two 15's is 30, three g, 
3 times 20 is 60, 30 plus 60 is 90, so it works. So I have confirmed that my answers are right and it's almost certain that I haven't made a mistake. Yes. Now, that will have been baffling for many of you. That does not mean that you're a fool, it means that you haven't studied this topic before and it's all new to you, okay? That's absolutely fine. I'm just going to go through, through, back through a few things that I've done there and then I'm going to show you how you'll solve it if you don't know that method, right? Does that sound good? Tough. You have no say in the matter. I'm going to do it anyway. Right. A few things to look at here. Why did I do A minus B and not B, at this stage here, not B minus A? It was because I looked at equation A and I saw that equation A had three G's and 90, whereas equation B had one G and 50. So if I did B minus A, I'd, got, I'd get a minus number, a negative number of G's, and I'd get a negative number of pence. And then it'd be really fiddly to sort out. So I chose to subtract it in the way that would leave me with positive numbers. 2G, not minus 2G, and so on. So that's why I did it that way round, okay? Just to remind you, what did I do with the second step? I'd worked out G, the cost of one orange, and I thought, right, now I need to work out the cost of a P. And I've already got some equations here, and I can pick either one that show me the connection between P's and G's and the overall cost. So I can just put the value of G, the value of an orange into there, and then I'll have an equation where the only thing I don't know is P, and I just solve it in the normal way, the normal way of solving a, a, you know, a linear equation that we've studied in other videos. Okay? Right. That's done. If you didn't understand it, don't panic. Hopefully now you will understand it um, more clearly. So I'm going to do, I'm going to draw a squiggly line down here and focus on the other side of the screen. I'll see if I can fit all my working in the right side here. Wish me luck. <clears throat> so Johnny bought two pairs and three oranges. He paid 90p. Jennifer bought two pairs and one orange. She paid 50p. So the first thing we should think about here is what's the difference between these two situations, okay? How are Johnny and Jennifer different, apart from the fact that Jennifer doesn't know how many, how many N's belong in her name? So look at these situations. Let me just say, what is different? We're looking at it freely, we're not thinking about it too much. Well, there's no difference in the pairs. There's a difference of two oranges. Johnny bought two more oranges. And Johnny paid 40p more. Hang on, so an extra, my handwriting comes out to play, extra two oranges equals extra 40 pence. So an extra one orange would be an extra half as much, an extra 20 pence. So every orange I add to my order adds 20 pence. What's the price of an orange? It's 20 pence. Of course it is. Two pairs and one orange are 50p. Okay, two pairs and one orange are 50p. So in other words, two pairs and an extra 20p gives us 50p. Nothing wrong with doing working around the question. Okay, so two pairs and 20p is 50p, so I've got two pairs, it's good to write down here because the examiner might miss your working up there, two pairs and 20p gives me 50p, sorry that's not very clearly written, I need to scroll up because it's behind my head, ooh this tablet is getting very hot, I hope it doesn't start freezing, uh, that's how hot it is in here, my tablet is feeling like yeah, a slab of something that's been in the oven, anyway, two pairs and 20p is 50p, well, hang on, we can work out from that. Two pairs not with an extra 20p is 30p, so one pair is 15p. Now, those of you who are paying attention, those two of you out there, uh, may have noticed that what I've done here is really very, very similar to what I did on the left-hand side here. I'm just doing the same things without writing lots of algebra. Those of you who aren't prejudiced for or against algebra 
might also form the opinion that what I have done here is a little simpler and took me less time. And I think you would be correct in that opinion. A lot of people think that when they see a question like this, they're going to get extra brownie points from the examiner if they do the really showy method. They're not. Unless it says you use algebra to solve it, unless they literally set out the equations and say solve these equations, in which case, yes, you've got to do algebra, but that's going to be very, very rare. Unless they do that, they don't care how you solve it. At the end of the day, you're just going to come out of the exam with a percentage mark, and that's going to be the important thing. So if there's a simpler way to do it, and you're able to show the working reasonably clearly, clearly as I think, partly in my handwriting, I've done on the right, then that's fine. Save time, get it right, don't do fiddly al algebra for the sake of showing off, okay? Um, because I and I'm sure all the lovely viewers of this channel never show off. Okay, on to the next one. Right, I like this one. Now this one is an extreme case because in this one you will see that the algebra is um, even fiddlier than what we just did. And then when I show you the method of solving it without using algebra, you'll think, why did I ever bother even learning algebra in the first place when I could just solve it like this? This is one of these questions where doing it in a non-algebraic way is just so much simpler. And the method that you can use to solve this one um, really, uh, you know, without using algebra um, could be very, very useful to you in a lot of situations. So. Tune in. Uh, anyone who wants to take part in the live chat and doesn't know how, you just need to click subscribe underneath the video and then you can join in. Subscribing is free. There's another button that says join. That's something you pay money for. I mean, it won't automatically pay, charge you when you click the button, but if you click the button and then go through the options and then pay, you pay money to access more videos, get some free stuff from me and that sort of thing. That's the join button. The subscribe button is totally free, which means you get updates about my channel basically, and it also means you can join the live chat. Right, here we have Julian. There's a J tendency to Today, isn't it? We had Johnny and we had Jennifer. Do we have any name? No, we didn't have any names in the first one. We just had the farmer and the cats and so on. But um, uh, yeah, all the characters today, their names begin with J. Interesting. That was not planned. Um, okay. Anyway, enough waffle from me. So first of all, the algebraic method. And again, same disclaimer as before. Yes, this may go completely over your head. If it does, watch it, see what you can follow, then go back to my other algebra videos, get the hang of those, and then maybe come back in and perhaps see what I'm doing. Um, and it might make a little bit more sense. Okay. So we are looking for a number of coins. We're not looking to work out values of money. We're looking to work out a number of coins. Julian, has 30 coins in total. He's got a mixture of 20p coins and 5p coins, and they add up to £4.20. Now, these are in pence, and I do not want to be working with pence and pounds, so I am immediately going to rewrite that as 420 pence, and that's what I'm going to work with in my, um, in my solution. If you start doing pence some, in some places, pounds on another, uh, you might get into a tangle. Now we need a number of 20p coins and a number of 5p coins. But I can't really write the number of coins, I can't call them 20 and 5, because how would I say I've got 20 20 p coins? What? 2000, no, 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 no. I need to call them something. What are the most common things that you call unknowns, variables, whatever term you want to use in algebra, x and y? And what we tend to do is we write a curly x, which is a backward c and a c. And the reason we write that, essentially, is because otherwise it's going to look like a times. So we write that curly x, and we have the curly y. So I'm going to call the number of 20p's, OK? Lodge that in your head. The number of 20p's is x, and the number of 5p's is y, OK? Not the value of them, not how much they're worth, the number of them because that's what we have to find out. I know I'm taking time over this initial bit, but if you don't get the initial things clear in your mind, the rest will become an atrocious tangle. Okay. Now, what do we know about these coins? We know that there are 30 of them. So the number of 20p's 
plus the number of 5 p's is going to be 30. And we called the number of 20 p's x. So the number of 20 p's and the number of 5 p's is equal to 30. The thing that I've just done there, talking aloud in plain English while I write the fancy maths, is a really, really useful discipline to develop. Because you don't want to be thinking of these things as weird abstract symbols. You want to be thinking about always the real things that they represent, because that will help guide what you need to do. So again, the number of 20 p's and the number of 5 p's is equal to, or is in total, whatever you want to say, 30. Okay? So that's me taking this first bit of information and writing it out mathematically. We've got another bit of information. In total they add up to 420 pence. Okay. Now the number of 20 p's and the number of 5 p's will not add up to 420 pence. The number adds up to 30. So I can't put x plus y is 420. This is where you really need to engage your brain to understand the next bit, because this might take a little bit of mental dexterity to get. Twenty pence times the number of twenty pence coins, plus five pence times the number of five pence coins, gives me four hundred and twenty. I don't write p when I'm doing the algebra. The um, the units, the currency, will come back at the end. What am I saying here? Another way of putting this. The total value of 20p coins is the number of them times by how much each one is worth. So, for example, if I had three 20 pence coins, the total value would be 3 times 20, 60. Three 20 pence coins are 60 pence. Okay? Does that help to clarify what I'm doing here? I hope so. If not, this might be one to rewind later and listen to again. So I've got two equations here. x plus y is 30 and 20x plus 5y equals 420. This second one looks like a real beast. I said this one's a little bit trickier than before and it is, but this is a real 11 plus question. But do not panic if you've just joined, because as I've already said, after I've done this and you've gone, I do not understand any of that, then I'm going to show you how you can do this incredibly simply while doing no algebra at all. So hang on for that. Right. So 20x is 5y is 420. Let's just look at that a second. Is there something that you spotted about this? Don't look at the first equation, just look at the second. 20x plus 5y is 420. All these numbers divide by 5. We can simplify this equation easily if we divide everything by 5. And remember, if you do the same thing to both sides, then you haven't changed the overall value of the equation. So draw a line under that. I'm going to have a new pair of equations. Same as the first one, x plus y equals 30. But the second one, divide everything by 5. 4x's plus y equals 84. Now, you're currently trembling in awe before my incredible mental arithmetic. How have I just done 420 divided by 5 is 84? But if you're a long time viewer of this channel, you will know that dividing by 5 is one of these mental arithmetic, arithmetic tricks that I'm always talking about because it's so straightforward. You divide by 10, which means knock the 0 off, 42, and then you double it, 84. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is how you divide by 5 very easily. You can do it with any number if I want to divide, I don't know. 34 by 5. 34 divided by 10 is 3.4, double it, 6.8. Okay? Dividing by 5 is easy when you divide by 10 and double. Um, even if you get nothing else from this lesson, I hope that's useful. So we've now got these two equations. Now, yeah, you know what? I'm going to go back to when we cheated on the second question. And rather than doing all the algebra, we looked at, the, at Johnny and Jennifer and what they were doing. And we said, what's the difference between what Johnny and Jennifer have done? And we realised that the difference was one orange and 40p. Rather than doing a minus b or b minus a or anything like that here, let's just take that approach for a second. 
What's the difference between these two equations? This method can create problems if you just think about it like this, but I think for any problem you're likely to encounter at 11 plus, this way of doing it is going to work. It can cause problems if uh, there are negative numbers involved and not consistently, but let's leave that. Not likely to turn up here. What's the difference between these two equations here? Ignoring the first two here, in fact I'll put a line through them. Uh, this is just for your benefit, you shouldn't go crossing out in the exam, it's good working. But anyway, just for now I'm going to put a line through it. What's the difference? The difference is 3x's, because it's difference between x and 4x, 3x's. N uh, there's no difference between the y's, so nothing there. And the difference here is 54. Well that was easy. It's much easier than going b minus a and doing it like that. The difference between these two things is 3x's and 54. 3x equals 54. How do we solve that? Even if you know no algebra at all, if 3x's are 54, then what's 1x going to be? It's going to be a third as much, which is 18. Of course it is, because you're brilliant with your 18 times table. So x is 18. In other words, we have 18 20p coins. Now, how can we find the number of 5p coins? So I said you go back, you find an equation with x and y in it, and you pick the simplest one because you like making your life easy and you don't do ridiculous things like trying to live stream a maths lesson in 30 odd degree heat um, with a little fan wafting next to you while sweat starts emerging revoltingly all over your body. You don't do things like that. And you also don't do things like now trying to look at the equation 4x plus y equals 84. You're sensible people. You don't do the live streaming and you don't pick that equation. You go for the one that says x plus y equals 30 because that's simple. Okay, so I'm going to come down here. The lines don't mean anything mathematically. It's just me breaking up the stages so you can easily see what's going on. Um, so, um, yeah, let's write that out again. X plus Y equals 30. That's me taking this here and just applying it down here. We know what X is. So instead of X, we can write 18. 18 plus Y equals 30. So if 18 plus Y equals 30, what must y be? It must be 12. Another way of doing that is to say 30 minus 18 equals 12. So x is 18 and y equals 12. So we've got 18 20p coins and 25p coins because 18 and 12 add up to 30. Remember what I said earlier, we do a quick check to make sure that um, this works in the other equation. I'm not going to go back to 20x plus 5y plus 420 because that's cumbersome, but I'm going to look at this one here. So let's just try these numbers out. If x is 18 and y is 12, does this one work too? If it does, we're probably golden. So four lots of 18, 72, I hope. y is 12, 72 plus 12 is 84. So we can be virtually certain we've got the right answer. I hope you're thinking, well, that wasn't too bad, was it? But you might be thinking, that was an absolute horror show, I will never be able to do that. Well, you will be able to do that, you'll learn it, it's something that's covered at GCSE, you'll study it lots, and you know, you'll become absolute masters of this. But let's say that for the moment that just flies over your head like, insert interesting simile, okay? What could we do with this instead? And this is where I pull out um, a gloriously simple method that you can generally use when you know how many things there are in total. So, you, for example, you know there are 10 things, so you can say, well, let's try three of them and seven of them, four of them and six of them, and so on. That's what we're gonna do here. It's gonna be really, really mind-blowingly easy. So ignore my working on the left, we're gonna start again. We got a so certain number of 20 Ps, okay? We got a certain number of five Ps, and we've got a total value. Okay, so we got numbers of 20 p's, numbers of 5 p's, and we got total value. It's a table. It's got columns. It's going to make our life very comfortable. And there's just one key thing that you need to remember. Well, there were several, but there's one really important one, which is that the total number of coins is 30. Okay, what do we do with this table? I'm going to tell you what we do with this table. We take a wild guess we can guess absolutely anything, as long as it adds up to 30. I could guess three 20p's and 27 5p's. I'm not going to do that because that would be a bit silly. I'm going to start with something nice and neutral. 
as any sensible person who doesn't do live streams in 30 odd degree heat uh, I think it was 33 degrees when I started any person who doesn't do that would know I'm going to try 15 and 15 we got 15 20 P's and 15 5 P's and now I'm going to work out the total value and this is just a guess it's a wild guess okay I do not know the answer at this point well, I mean I do but you know me in an exam does not know it this is a guess 1520 peeps, what does that cost? Okay, that's relatively easy, times it by 10 and double it, or double it and times by 10. Either way, we get 300, right? 15 times 10 is 150, double it, 300. 15 5 peeps, what's 15 times 5? Okay, times it by 5, times by 10 and half it is an easy way to do it, so 150 half is 75. 300 plus 75 equals 375. And now we ask ourselves a very simple question. What's the question? Is it too high or is it too low? Someone in the comments saying, I really don't understand why you use a table. Just hang on. Hopefully you'll understand it by the time um, I've finished answering it. And then you'll go, aha. <coughs> is 375 too high or too low? We want 420. It's too low. We need 30 coins in total. So if we increase the number of one kind of coin, we've got to d decrease the other. So a question for you. Will we have a greater value in total if we have more 20 Ps or if we have more 5 Ps? It'll be if we have, your, if we have more 20 Ps, won't it? Because 20 Ps are worth more, each of them. So if we want this to be worth more, to go towards 420, we need to increase the number of 20 Ps. And now I'm going to guess again. Okay, so I guessed 15 20 p's and that was too low. What's a sensible thing to guess? Some people would guess 16, but there's a problem with that. What if the answer in the end is 24 20 p's? So I've got to do loads and loads and loads of stages. So instead we make sensible jumps. What's the next sensible jump? I think it's 20 20 p's. If there are 20 20 p's, there must be 10 5 p's because there are 30 coins in total. Okay, do a line up line there to separate because I let working go too low, sorry. Okay. 20 20 p's, 400 pence. 10 5 p's, 50 pence. So that's 450 pence. And we ask again, is that too high or too low? We want 420. It's too high, but it's closer. So now we need to reduce our number of 20 pences, but this is closer. So we, we want to still say nearer, a bit nearer to 20 than we were to 15. So what would be the obvious thing to try? Well, it could be 19, but that, that would make our answer really close and 450 isn't really close to 420. Let's try 18, okay? So let's try 18 20 p's, which means we have 12 5 p's because they need to add up to 30. 18 times 20 is 360, okay? Times by 10 and double it. 12 times 5 is 60, because we know that because we can do times tables. 360 plus 60 is 420. And that is what we were looking for. And we found the answer. 18 20 p's and 12 5 p's, which of course is what we found earlier. Right, I spent a long time on that question, so I'm not going to recap what I just did there. But I do believe, perhaps foolishly, that I was quite clear as I went along. That does not mean that you're foolish if you didn't get it. What it does mean, though, is that if you want to understand the table method better, I think your best approach now, is, not now, now, no, not now, stay watching. Your best approach later is to rewind and watch that section again. And then maybe try and have your own go on your own working out paper, as I did on my working out paper uh, before I did this lesson. Um, I did cheat, uh, because in the past, when I've done these without checking, doing my answers in advance, I've made stupid mistakes, and it's been very embarrassing, and I've had to do video edits and such like, so we don't want that. Um, <clears throat> so yeah, you can print off the worksheet, as every regular viewer knows, the worksheet is always linked in the video description, and you can get the worksheets in advance if you join my mailing list. Go to the free papers and videos link in the video description to join my mailing list and then I send them to you several days in advance. But anyway, you can always get the worksheet from the video description, you can print it off and have a go yourself. Right, enough of all that. Last question. Okay, last question. Relief is breathed all round. I can tell you now this one is going to take me significantly less time than that one. 
I hope you're happy to hear that. I'm happy to hear that. I'm cooking. I've been cooking all along, but it's getting fairly extreme. Given the scales below, what's the weight of one circle? So what have we got? We've got circles and we've got squares. But this is the kind of thing that you start to think about when you get used to doing algebraic problems. I don't want to call my squares S because that's going to look like a five in my horrible handwriting. So I'm going to imagine that they're boxes instead. So I'm going to call my circles C and I'm going to call my squares B for box, okay? It's a completely arbitrary choice. You can call them X and Y, you can call them P and Q. You can call them absolutely anything you like. You can replace them. You can give the score a circle, a star symbol, and you can make B some other crazy symbol. I, it doesn't matter. Um, it's just whatever you want to label them. I'm labeling, labeling them C and B, okay? And down here we've got B and C. And you can see on the top we've got two Cs and three Bs, and the bottom we've got one B and one C. So if we made this into algebra, we can see here that three boxes, I'm going to call them boxes from now on, three boxes and two circles have a weight of, or are equal to, in fact are equal to makes a lot of sense here because we're talking about scales, so the weight is equal, are equal to 39, whatever this is, kilograms, grams, ounces, it doesn't matter. It's just a thing, it's some kind of unit of, of, of weight, okay? 2b plus 2c equals 39. Down here, b and c, so 1b and 1c have a weight of 17. Okay? And they are my two equations. So I'm going to write down at the bottom, I'm going to write those equations again. 3b, that doesn't look like a 3, it does kind of now, plus 2c equals 39, b plus c equals 17. Now remember from various earlier points what I've been aiming to do. I've been aiming to find the difference between two equations so that I'm only left with one unknown letter which I can then solve. Go back up. I've been looking to find the difference between two equations so that I'm left with only one unknown letter so I've got an equation that I can solve. Okay? Consistent pattern. What I'm doing is I'm getting rid of one letter value so that I've got an equation with only one unknown letter that I can solve. Now look at these two equations. What happens if I think find the difference between these? The difference is two b's and a c and what's 39 minus 17? It's 22, isn't it? So I've got the difference is two b's and one c equals 22. That's still an equation with two things I don't know. I can't solve it. So what else can I do here? Remember what we did earlier? Lots of skipping to and fro here, but it's trying to sort of create form relationships between ideas in your mind. Look at what we did with this and how we got to this. We divided everything by five, because remember, if you divide or multiply everything by the same amount, then the equation still has, you know, the, the, the unknown still have the same value. I'm not fundamentally messing with the equation. So I want to have a difference between these equations that gets rid of something. And it occurs to me just by looking that I've got a 2c and a c. If I were to time the second equation by 2, then I'd have two c's in both equations. So let's copy the first one out again, just to get that there. This is just to line things up neatly. It's not because it has any real importance. And then the second one, I'm going to, oops, I'm not going to do that. I'm going to double it. So now I've got two b's and two c's are 34. And this here is the same as this, just times by 2, but it's still essentially the same. And now I'm going to ignore these, I'm just going to consider these. Again, the crossing out I've done there is just to make it clearer for you, it's not something you should do in an exam. Don't cross out good working, because you want it to be assessed. 3b's and 2c's, blah blah blah. Okay, what's the difference between these equations? The difference is a b, no c's, and Five difference between 39 and 34 is 5. This method would not work if 
you had more bees you had more bees here than here but you had more numbers here than here then you get into a tangle then you should do a more formal subtraction you should do a minus b equals or whatever equation one minus equation two equals but here it's just dead simple we got b equals five so we already know we already know the weight of one box but we need to find the weight of one circle how can we do that well we know that let's uncross out that now hey stop it my computer is not working right it's overheating I think let's see if I can use this technique here no I can't I've got a problem here this might stop working and I might just have to talk you through but let's hope I don't have to do that um, ah ladies and gentlemen we seem to have a problem oh, okay it's all happened finally good ah, okay let's see if I can just get through to the end and now it's doing it with my finger which it shouldn't be doing okay B plus C equals 17 so 5 plus C equals 17 that's taking this equation here and putting the value of B in which is 5 5 and C equals 17 so C equals 5 less than 17 which is 12 so the weight of one circle is 12 don't write grams or ounces or kilograms we don't know it's just 12 they haven't told us what the actual units of measurement are <coughs> so that's how you do it using algebra but again it is possible to do this without although this is a question where I think it's probably simplest to do what I've just done as long as you know the method because frankly the other method of doing it that I'm about to show you is really just a different way of visualizing the same method when it comes down to it okay so let's go back up to the pictures and let's get rid of all the stuff around it if you want to see that again you can rewind the video it'll turn up again getting rid of all that okay getting rid of all this right and getting rid of all this okay we're off so let's just look at the pictures and let's use that to help us we want to think about what's different between the first situation and the second situation because the basic principle here is that we are comparing two things and comparing two things means looking at similarities and differences okay so what's similar and what's different and we look at this now and really the answer is everything's different we've got a different number of boxes a different number of circles and a different weight so we don't want so many things to be different if we're going to do a decent comparison now these are balance scales so the situation is not fundamentally changing if the scale stays balanced and I might notice that if I add the same stuff again another box another circle and another 17 it's going to stay balanced okay now what's the difference between these the weight total weight here is 34 I should just note that on to be clear so the difference between these two situations now is one box there's no difference in circles and five the difference between 39 and 34 so we've worked out that one box is um yeah we've worked out that one box is worth five whatever the weight is okay let's go back to the original and let's write that in that's weighs five five and something is 17 if five and something is 17 the something must be 12. now in all the previous examples really i've said that the method that doesn't use algebra is simpler for this one i don't really think that's the case i actually think in my opinion for me that lining it up like this as a pair of equations is a simpler more manageable way of visualizing the problem than what I did up here because I think that by the time you're thinking what's the difference who maybe I can double it to get rid of a variable and then I can subtract and then I can work out the other variable I'm just doing algebra I'm doing algebra in I'd almost say a less commonsensical way 
but that way is available and you don't need to know algebra and the principles and the, what the letters mean and so on in order to do it so it's certainly an option and that ladies and gentlemen is it but my favorite one from today i think is the table on the right here um it doesn't work for every question but it works really well for a question like this where you know the total number and you need to find uh, and, and yeah where you, you where you have a total number and a total value and you need to match them up basically um, for those kinds of questions which are often money questions it's a corker of a method and it's usually easier trial and improvement with the table it's usually easier than setting up the simultaneous equations and solving them we got there all of you who are still watching congratulations I hope that um, it contained at least some spark of enlightenment amid all the confusion um, you know the odd diamond in the dung heap um, and if it didn't, uh, well, I'm very, very proud of you for still being here amid your bafflement. Um, yeah, great. Uh, happy birthday to whoever people are wishing, wishing, wishing happy birthday to. Um, and um, yeah, OK, great. Um, going on to the, I've got to remember what my tip of the week is. What is my tip of the week? Um, oh, yeah, dead simple. OK. <laughs> So my tip of the week actually goes back, cunningly, to the first question that we looked at there. And really, I'm going to reiterate something that, uh, do some cunning sc scrolling here, so I don't have to do it on the screen. I'm going to reiterate something that I spoke about right at the start, but I think it's so important. So it was this question here, the first question that we looked at. And I said that a lot of people will see this question and go, simultaneous equations, and they'll immediately start charging in and doing the method that they've learned for simultaneous equations. And they'll spend, you know, five minutes on it. And they won't notice that there was a much easier method, just add everything together. And if they'd read the question properly and read this, they would have seen it. And so my simple point for today's tip of the week, which applies across maths, English, just anything you do, is do not do your exams like a robot. Do not see a question and go, I know the method for this, I'm now going to do the method. Stop and think. Engage with the question. Think about what it actually means. Make sure you've read and actually thought about every part of it before you just go plunging in. This is relevant to everybody. Anybody who has done a certain number of exams will on, probably on several occasions have made this mistake, sometimes with disastrous consequences. Always take the time to read the question information properly and just think about it before you go charging in. Don't be a robot. Right, I'm going to take maybe two or three questions maximum um, and then I'm going to escape, partly because it's been going on a long time and you've got other things to do, but also because, I mean, look at my face, you can see how shiny it is. Uh, I'm suffering in the heat here. Um, so, um, Yathas Patwa says, Hi Robert, I'm not sure if you remember me. Um, I certainly remember your name and uh, there was someone uh, with the same first name. Uh, whose work I used to look at through 11 plus lifeline. So uh, could that perhaps be you? I'm not sure. Um, right. Um, do, 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 I'm seeing some questions here. Okay. Um, someone's looking at a new video on the nth term. Princess Yemi, I have very good news for you. There are, I think, two videos in the channel already, at least two, on this topic. So I'm not immediately planning to do another, but that's because I don't need to, because there's loads of material there. Um, have a look. Uh, have a look on the channel. You know, search Easy Eleven Plus Nth Term in YouTube, and you will find my content. Um, people ask me to do videos on particular schools. Um, uh, I sometimes do, but only if they've actually released uh, school-specific past papers that I can work on. Video on ratio. I've covered that. I've covered that at some point. Search Easy Eleven Plus Ratio or Ratios. Um, um, Faber J asking a question at a specific school uh, not particularly I don't think do Wolverhampton girls release any of their own past papers not that I'm aware of but I could be wrong but uh, Faber also says can you give me some tips for quick preparation um, <clears throat> uh, various things I could say I think the main thing is don't get into the kind of panic where you think I'm short of time, I just need to do loads and loads and loads of practice papers and just do them. As I was, rather as I was saying in my tip, 
make sure that you stop and think. And frankly, if you're short of preparation time, just ploughing through entire papers is not always the best use of that time because any practice paper is going to contain a lot of questions that you already find quite easy. So my suggestion is to home in on your weaknesses at this point. Um, you know, if you haven't got a good base of preparation behind you, focus on sorting out the things that are most problematic. So let's say you have a maths paper, you find this past paper, look through the questions in advance and look at the ones that you clearly know how to do, cross them out, and then just focus your time on doing the questions that you find difficult and trying to understand those better. Um, and that way, you'll be able to cover more material, but you'll also have much more time to think about your skills and develop them. But the last thing is don't panic. If you're short of preparation time, then obviously you have a handicap compared to some other people. So there's no point getting stressed. There's no point judging yourself by this. Just do your best. And if it doesn't come off, it doesn't say anything bad about you. It's still amazing all the effort you put in. Um, and, you know, to be honest, as I'm always saying to people, people get much too hung up on the 11 plus. Someone who is motivated enough to sit this exam and to prepare for it is likely to be someone who does well at any secondary school, you know, whether it's your dream school or, you know, um, the local comprehensive that you never even thought about that might actually be quite decent. But even if it isn't, you'll still do well because you're that kind of person. And so just relax and that will also help you with your preparation. Um, okay. Uh, you know what? I'm seeing loads of questions I've already answered lots of times before. Um, so I'm with great respect for your for the time you take taking to type them i'm going to skip them because i've been going almost an hour uh, i'm trying to keep my lessons much shorter than that these days this one's run on and so let's quit while we're winning uh, all right people it's been fantastic to have you here uh last shout out for my special offer anybody can send me a piece of writing you know a description a short story a letter a diary entry um pretty much anything for as long as it's quite short, under 300 words, that's about, you know, as long as it's under about a page, for completely free feedback, as long as you haven't done that before. Um, search 11 plus lifeline, or look at the link that I'm gonna post in the general comments under this video um, in a few minutes time, and you'll find out how to do that. And then I give you my feedback, my feedback completely for free. Uh, it's a way of, you know, getting a sense of how my marking works in case you're interested in it in the future, but uh, it's completely free. There is absolutely no catch whatsoever. Okay, um, right, that will do. I'm going to escape. You're going to escape. It's been fantastic to see you. Very, very well done to everybody who stuck this out. That was a difficult, difficult lesson. And um, you're my heroes. All right, enjoy your summer. See you next week. Bye-bye. I need this.